Hey everybody, welcome to the first info session for the 2024 Carbon Removal Challenge presented by Peter and Erica Reinhardt. I am Matt Parker, uh, co-founder of Open Air and co-chair of the Carbon Removal Challenge. Uh, so we are... Uh, first, we're going to thank our sponsors, uh, because this challenge would not be possible without them. Uh, our presenting sponsors, Peter and Erica Reinhardt, uh, really uh, stepped up and made this uh, challenge uh, possible, providing uh, travel stipends for our teams. We'll talk about those later. Our venue sponsor, Carbon Unbound, uh, which is going to be a really nice addition to our challenge this year. And then we also want to thank our kiloton level sponsors, the NYU Alliance for Public Interest Technology, Activate, and NYU Tisch School of the Arts. Uh, we also want to thank our partners. Uh, we have many great partners who are helping us spread the word and pass things along about the challenge. Please visit our website to learn more about them. Uh, these are really great organizations uh, that are really moving uh, climate forward. And we want to give a special thanks to Frontier and RMI, uh, who we are joined by uh, by panelists uh, from those uh, partners today, um, where I misspelled partners on the slide. I should fix that. <laughs> um, but uh, we are, uh, yeah, we're going to hear from them uh, shortly, and they're going to tell us about some really interesting stuff uh, with a new wrinkle that we've got for the carbon removal challenge this year with the Frontiers Knowledge Gaps. Uh, carbon removal knowledge gap database. Uh, but uh, first, I want to introduce a couple of the members of the organizing crew for the Carbon Removal Challenge, uh, Thushara Elizabeth Tom and Duncan McDowell, uh, both important members of the Carbon Removal Challenge. Uh, Thushara, you want to do a quick intro? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I am the co chair of Open Airs 2024. Carbon Removal Challenge. I'm thrilled to be part of this initiative and looking forward to seeing the creative solutions that every team comes up with. Um, I hope everyone has an insightful session and back to you, Matt. Great. And uh, Duncan, do you want to quickly uh, introduce yourself? Yep. Hi, everybody. I'm Duncan McDowell. I'm Media Director for the Carbon Removal Challenge. This is my uh, second year with it. Um, I helped get it going last year and uh, my hope is to help the good work of this next generation of removers radiate as far and wide as possible um, in the hopes of helping the uh, area of carbon removal consolidate as its own unique culture with professional options and culture and language and everything. And it's a lot of fun and I'm really looking forward to this, uh, this year's challenge. Yeah, and uh, Duncan also uh, has been doing a lot of great media work. He has got his own media production company called Possible Studio um, that uh, did a really amazing recap of last year's 2023 Carbon Removal Challenge, which we will watch now. finalists uh sound coming through the teams that participated in this event uh <laughs> deserve your thanks and applause so let's do a quick round of applause i don't think the sound is coming through matt i heard it for a minute and now now it's gone Okay, that's weird. I'll reshare that. Sorry about that, everybody. You re the sound really makes it, so I'll uh, <laughs> fix that. Sorry about that. Okay. Da, da, da. Apologies. Okay. Challenge. Good. Oh, wait. Uh, but all the teams that participated in this event uh, deserve your thanks and applause. So let's do a quick round of applause. <laughs> this has been a dream for open air for a long time. Uh, we had 28 teams from 10 different countries from five different continents uh, be part of this challenge. But tonight we are here with the five finalist teams. And I really wanted to create something of my own, and this has given me a platform to do that. And I'm, yeah, I'm very grateful for that. It's, it's been a really cool ride. It's amazing that we've been able to like spread what we're doing, um, even from Australia in, in New York. I'd always kind of thought about 
climate change and carbon removal in abstract terms before I started this project. But now that I participated in it, I really understand that it's such a big, multifaceted issue and that there's so many different sides to removing carbon. The Carbon Removal Challenge was organized by myself and other open air volunteers. We put this together ourselves. We launched a competition. We went out and recruited as many teams as possible. We guided them through an acceptance process. We gave them educational materials to help them understand the everything from the landscape of what carbon removal was, why it was important, what the different technologies were out there, how you measure and verify and grow these technologies once they're ready. Five finalist teams were accepted and flown to New York City for a final showcase of their work at NYU as part of the 2040 Now initiative, where they got to showcase their ideas for industry leaders, other students, uh, inspire that next generation of people to get involved in the carbon removal challenge going forward. We were really lucky that the carbon removal challenge was part of the NYU's 2040 Now initiative, where NYU was sort of imagining what the world was going to be like in 2040 now and where all these climate solutions would be by then. And I've been so amazed here today watching students coming with working devices that are literally removing CO2 from the atmosphere, prototypes that use engineering, chemistry, biology, art, communication. So the students got to not only come in and showcase their projects uh, as part of the Carbon Removal Challenge, but they also got to experience a lot of these other talks and sessions and learn about uh, carbon removal. We also wanted to give them the opportunity to experience New York some, so uh, we set up a list of fun activities for students who are coming to New York. They got to do the High Line, they got to uh, visit some landmarks that are, are popular for visitors to New York. Uh, we wanted to be a mix of both pleasure and uh, learning for them uh, while they were here in New York. We're so grateful for our sponsors, Brink, Air Company, Peter and Erica Reinhardt, and NYU Sustainability, NYU Alliance for Public Interest Technology, and NYU Tisch uh, were huge in us being able to have a first successful carbon removal challenge, and we really couldn't have done it without the support of those amazing sponsors. This year's challenge was a huge success and we we're really happy about it. We think it's a great stepping stone to uh, next year. Next year, what we need to grow this program is we need more sponsorship. We need to get the word out to more students, more teams around the world. Uh, we need to be able to create more opportunities for our, not just our finalist teams, but for all the participants in this challenge because a big key to the Carbon Removal Challenge is not just will this team come up with a visionary solution, a breakthrough, something that will overhaul the way we're doing carbon removal. We just need more people working on climate. We just need more people working on carbon removal specifically. And this challenge will be a feeder into that industry. This challenge will create the workforce of tomorrow that's really going to change carbon removal. Whether or not they come through with a breakthrough, they're going to be the people who are leading, working, developing this industry by mid-century when we need this to be one of the biggest solutions for climate that we have going. Chills. All right. <laughs> um, so thank you, uh, Possible Studio. Thank you, Daniel, for that. Um, so yeah, uh, one thing you should definitely, I mean, it'd be surprising if you some here got, got here without uh, knowing about the Carbon Removal Challenge, but definitely look back at the Carbon Removal Challenge, check out the website. All the information from that first challenge is still online if you go to uh, openaircollectives.cc 2023. Uh, and one thing we were really proud of is that this was truly a global challenge, that we got uh, teams from around the world, uh, and we're hoping to do that again this year. So yeah, we are excited about the 2024 Carbon Removal Challenge. Uh, we again are trying to get teams from all around the world. Uh, we are going to provide support and guidance for those teams to help them uh, come up with really great solution, really great ideas, really push things forward. Um, and this year, uh, we are partnering with Carbon Unbound, uh, which is a huge conference for carbon removal that's going to be in New York again, this time in May uh, of this year. And we're going to, it's going to be a really excellent opportunity for our finalist teams to meet leaders in the industry. So 
Uh, Carbon Unbound is a uh, the leading uh, carbon removal business summit. Uh, it is something that really is focused on so the C level people, the people who are running these carbon removal uh, companies and and leaders in the industry, uh, and it is. Uh, usually uh, outside of the student uh, price range, but uh, we are going to provide some opportunities for teams, for our finalist teams to attend uh, so that they can really meet those leaders and start to work with them. Uh, so just to get through you know, the prizes, the reason why people compete in challenges, uh, we're gonna have five finalist teams uh, will tre receive travel stipends for up to four students to cover their travel to New York City uh, for the final showcase at Carbon Unbound, which is gonna be uh, in May of 2024. Each team will receive free lodging, uh, per diems, and a sort of gift from Open Air and our sponsors and partners. Uh, the finalists will also receive two passes per day uh, to the Carbon Unbound uh, Summit where they will be able to uh, share them among the different teammates. Uh, and then they'll also be able to check out New York when they're not going to the conference and uh, uh, do other activities and use this as an opportunity to uh, explore one of the greatest cities in the world. Um, and all finalists will, uh, will participate in the uh, Carbon Removal Challenge final showcase as part of the opening night ceremony for Carbon Unbound, uh, allowing them to share their work with those sort of high level people in the industry. Um, in addition to Providing those opportunities uh, for the finalists, we're also going to provide a series of webinars and educational content to all the participants of the challenge. Uh, you're sitting in one right now. If you're watching this video, you are experiencing some of that opportunity right now to learn more about the challenge and to learn about uh, carbon removal in general. And we're going to be doing a host of these uh, throughout the challenge to help people learn more about carbon removal, how it fits into the sort of global climate picture. Uh, this is always something that people are keen to know about. So the challenge has begun. If you are watching this video, if you are uh, in this session, the challenge is going on right now. You can apply for your team to be part of it right now. You don't have to wait for the deadline. This isn't something that starts in uh, December 15th when applications close. This is something where you can apply to be part of the challenge and enter now and start working on your solutions now. And if you start now, Maybe you're ahead of the game on some of those teams that get in December. Uh, so start working on it now. Uh, we'll talk about what you need to, to be part of the challenge uh, in a future slide. I believe it's the next slide. Um, but we're going to have a series of these webinars uh, throughout the throughout the fall and winter and spring. Um, we're going to have a, a submission deadline in March. So you've got basically from now until March to work on your projects uh, and you'll submit them in early March. Then in, later in March, you will be, uh, the five finalists will be notified. And then in uh, May is when we're gonna have that final showcase at Carbon Unbound. So um, just some more general details about the challenge. Uh, this challenge is open to students of higher, end, uh, higher education institutions, grad and undergrad, uh, each team, uh, We'll design a solution, uh, but these solutions can vary. Many of them will be engineering solutions. Some of them will be policies. Uh, some of them will be different approaches. We're open to it all. Uh, we're going to allow people to, to be creative about what they submit to this challenge. Uh, each submission needs to have a faculty or staff advisor from their school uh, who's going to send a letter of support along with that submission. Uh, so you're going to be asked to provide that as part of your submission. Uh, so if you don't have one of those, it's time to start shopping around your school to try and find somebody from your uh, home university or college who will help support your submission to the challenge. Um, our judges will uh, evaluate each submission based on its potential impact, originality, and overall quality. And then uh, you will submit a 10-page white paper with a letter of support from your academic advisor, uh, as well as whatever supplemental materials you want to submit as well. Uh, so... We are also going to encourage students that want to and are comfortable doing it to open source their solutions so that other people can work on top of them and expand them and we can really help accelerate these challenges. We're working with our partners at OSHWA, the Open Source Hardware Association, to provide additional opportunities for the teams that do choose to open source their uh, projects as part of the Open Hardware Summit in April of 2024. Um, and we are uh, working also with Frontier, you may have heard, uh, with their college, uh, carbon removal knowledge gaps. Uh, 
one thing that people are uh, we're really excited about this year is the ability for people to look at these knowledge gaps, see what the areas that need focus on, try and come up with solutions in those areas, and then submit uh, submissions to the to the challenge that will address some of those knowledge gaps. Uh, and the most innovative innovative of those, uh, the best one that makes it as one of the finalists will re- receive a special award for best knowledge gap response at that final showcase. Uh, so please register for the challenge uh, now, sign up now, spread the word, let people know if you're interested, uh, send the information around. We want as many people as possible participating in this challenge. If you have more questions about this challenge, we're going to do a Q&A section at the end of this session. Uh, so please get those questions into the Q&A uh, if you have questions, and we'll respond to those at the end of this info session. And the slide was a mistake. So I'm going to go back uh, and stop sharing. Uh, but it is now time uh, to bring in our special guests uh, from RMI and from Frontier Stripe uh, to talk about the knowledge gaps, uh, the knowledge gaps database. So uh, Kara and Vraka, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, do you want to do quick intros of yourself to start? Sure. Excited to be here. Thanks, thanks, Matt, for the great uh, intro. My name is Brauke. I'm the science lead at Frontier, which is like a, a conglomerate of like carbon removal buyers, including like Shopify, Stripe, Alphabet, McKinsey, like all, all kinds of uh, people buying early stage carbon removal. And me and my colleagues, we are thinking through like what are the most viable ways for removing carbon from the atmosphere, and then try to figure out like how to scale um, the most. Uh, promising solutions as fast as possible so that we get to the best climate outcome. And we work a lot with like people in the ecosystem, uh, including Kara as, uh, at RMI, who's been um, very helpful. And we we tell you more about the database in a second, Kara. Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks, Matt, for having me on. Um, this is really exciting. I think the, the challenge is really exciting. So um, I'm jealous we didn't have something like that when I was when I was in school. Um, so yes. I'm Cara Maizano. I work at an organization called RMI, which is a nonprofit that's um, been around for about 40 years, mostly focused on um, energy transition, renewable energy, but they have since expanded. Um, and uh, I joined a year and a half ago with my team from another organization to build up a carbon removal program within, within RMI. Um, our team focuses on technology assessment and road mapping across all, all of CDR. Um, so we do some similar work to what Frauke does in evaluating some of these technologies, but we we approach it a little bit differently. Um, yeah, um, I think I think I'll leave it there so we can get into the fun stuff. Great. Thanks so much. Yeah. Do you want to share screen or do you want me to? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it should I'll be... share the screen and then Fraka will talk you through. Yeah. We have a few slides just to intro you how we built the database and what we did it for and what it is and, and hopefully how you guys can use it. Um, and then Kara is also going to walk you through a um, small demo uh, on, on how to use it. And then we can open it up for questions. Sounds great. Sorry, just give me one second. Sure. This is an excellent time while we're waiting for this to come up to for me to plug that. We are looking for teams. So if you're here, if you're a student here, please sign up for the challenge. That's our primary goal is to get as many students as possible to participate in this. But we're also looking for sponsors and partners. So if you are uh, from a company and you see this and you want to be a part of or a nonprofit and you want to be part of the challenge in some way, uh, we have excellent sponsorship packages uh, and opportunities for you as well. So please reach out to us uh, by going to our website and filling out our interest form, uh, which I think uh, that nicely filled the gap there. <laughs> so I'll turn it back over to Fraka and Kara. Perfect. Yeah, um, we, yeah, we don't can see the, that? yeah, we don't see the slideshow. If you can, if you can go and present yeah, them all. I tried to, no, I thought, uh, let's see. Oh, hold on. Someday we'll master. <laughs> How many scientists does it take to? <laughs> um, let's see. 
I can. Oh, and my French is really bad. I realize. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't doing. I think if you go to the top, like the. Normally, if you go to view, okay. Let me try yeah. this. Oh, that, that should be it. This looks good. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Thanks. Okay, so we can we can directly jump into the second um, slide, which is just um, yeah. motivation. And and you guys all probably know that since you're here and you want to work on carbon removal, if you just like click one more time, Cara, like we have a long way to go. Um, you know, right now we have like removed uh, like what we count as permanently removed CO2 from the atmosphere, like less than 10,000 tons or like uh, around that. And we need a way <laughs> longer way to go. Right. So just to show you, you know, the, the scale of the whole challenge that we're looking at. So this is really the time to accelerate and figure out what works to to get going. Right. So you you're really hitting a white space here and we need every brain on this call to throw yourself at this challenge because this is where we need to go. So <laughs> bit of a scary plot, but also motivation, I think, for me always to to, um, you know, think back why we're here and, and why we're doing that. So next slide, the the whole challenge of getting to this scale and gigaton carbon removal takes two things. One is like what we call multiple shots on goal, right? Like getting as many approaches as possible to the starting line. And then two, figuring out which ones work. And that means, you know, like solving un uh, solve challenges and knowledge gaps in the technologies that we know that work. We know we can do chemical direct air capture, but then how do we like reduce the energy demand? How do we scale this properly? We know we can like spread rocks on field that react with like CO2 in the soil, but then how do we measure and quantify that appropriately so that we, you know, like know um, how much carbon has been removed in a given time. So there's like all these open questions. We need like novel approaches, but then we also need to answer the questions in the approaches that we already know. Next slide. Um, so we set out and we heard before in the introduction that Matt showed, you know, it's a very diverse set of solutions and it requires a lot of like different skills, expertise to like solve all these questions. There's like many, many questions to answer in the whole field of carbon removal. It's not all chemical engineering. You need like social science. You need there's like all all skills are, are basically needed. So what we in this early field, when it's like a little bit messy, what we set out to do with the carbon removal knowledge gaps database, which I know is a mouthful, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, you know, we, we set out trying to find like one database where we put to like, where we basically list like what are open questions, challenges in the field. And we wanted to make it accessible for, you know, like functional experts in the field, like people working on these problems, like people looking like you students looking for like, what are problems to solve? to have like one space where, where all this is listed and where hopefully the connection can happen. And then some of these questions are starting um, to be filled and getting answered. Uh, next slide. So what this is basically is or like what we did is like me and like my colleagues uh, got together with a lot of experts in the field, including Cara and like many, many, many others that helped us, you know, like narrow down what are key knowledge gaps in the field? This is like by no means, you know, fully comprehensive. You might see it and think like, oh, I've been, you know, I thought this was a great knowledge gap in the field or nobody is answering that, but then it's not listed here. Let us know, you know, it's all uh, editable. You, you can um, submit new gaps and you can edit the ones that are there. We split it out in like different pathways. So we already know like, or like people distinguish between technological pathways, direct air capture, geochemical, carbon removal, ocean-based carbon removal and whatnot. So it's like pathway specific. And then there's like knowledge gaps. We split them out in categories, like fundamental science questions, you know, like, does this really work? Like, what is the process um, to, to that's influencing this? What are like MRV questions? You will hear that often in, in carbon removal, like measurement verification and reporting you know, how, how is that being done? Like technical questions, you know, like what's the best piece of equipment? What's the best reactor? Like how do we integrate like the the grid, the, the decarbonized grid with direct air capture, things like that. Um, so that's, that's how we split out the gaps. And then I think on the next slide we have uh, just a reminder, like, so what are the goals for this whole piece, right? Like one is to make the critical knowledge gaps more uh, visible, you know, for people like also with 
cross-disciplinary experts to plug in. So our theory is that a lot of people might know about might know pieces of this but they they don't have a good way to plug in you might be a microbiology student and you might ask how do i work on carbon removal there's actually a lot of questions that have to do with microbiology there's a lot of questions that have to do with like robotics or ai or whatever so we try to build this tool so that you can filter for like skill sets or keywords and things like that um so that you can you know like figure out how you can fit in and help here and then, yeah, we hope and to inspire, you know, gap filling action. That's that's the ultimate goal. And we're very excited to hear from Matt and like all the others like this. This challenge is like a perfect example to, you know, like how this database can be used for like actionable, um, you know, progress in the field. So the next slide has a screenshot and I'll give it over to Karas uh, and she's going to walk you through how the database looks like uh, and how hopefully you guys can use it. Yeah, thanks. Um, okay, so you can see on on this screenshot that there are a number of different attributes on the on the left side. So we've got the gaps you see um, you see here. I don't know if you can see my my mouse. Yes. Um, and those are the different gaps, but we can also filter um, filter the gaps by by pathway, by category, by impact and this is slightly subjective um, i think you yeah, yeah sorry carl i think you have to leave the i oh. think i do yeah yes. hold on i will try this um okay i'll share the actual database exactly no it didn't work um uh-oh nothing like a live demo I yeah. know, but you know, I just, I had it all set up and I just clicked it off on accident. So I'm going <laughs> to get it. That, that, that's the part of the fun of live demos. Yeah, um, I guess why I do that, I'll just try to, um, let's see, Frontier, yeah. While, uh, while we're waiting for you to get that up, I'll start uh, diving into some of the Q&A that's coming already, uh, which there was a question of whether or not uh, the slides would be shared. And I mentioned that this, the open air slides will be uh, shared on the website uh, for this info session. Would it be possible for these slides, uh, your slides to be shared as well, like as a PDF or something of that ilk? Sure, yeah. Great. I, I don't think... I can't see a problem, of course, if that's helpful. Yes, okay. perfect, Kara. All right, there we go. And I dropped okay. the link in the chat too. Oh, perfect. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, um, we encourage everybody to play around with this, um, but I'll just show you basically how it's set up. Um, so we have the gaps here. Um, if we can click on a gap and it will give you more detail and I'll go into some of these in a bit. Um, but uh, one of the one of the interesting features here is that you can sort by pathway. So um, you, as I think many of you know, there are different ways to remove carbon from the atmosphere. Um, they all have, you know, various names, some names are not listed here, but um, you can see that there are different options. So um, there are different categories of gaps. Is this a fundamental research gap? Is this focused on MRV? And by MRV, we mean measurement, but we also kind of mean the reporting side and also the verification side, especially scientific verification. Um, the, there's technical engineering, um, governance has to do with policy and regulations, and then novel CDR pathways. That's the most exciting one. And then we have the fewest gaps there. So we're counting on you you guys to, um, to, to provide more novel CDR pathways. Um, there's impact. I'll just show you. So impact, very high, high, and medium. So what what we mean by impact is, is this a lever that spans multiple pathways or is, um, 
especially big? Like, is this an especially big lever to pull or will this just have a small amount of impact? Um, both both high impact and low impact are, you know, solutions are welcome, obviously. Um, needed skill sets. So this is um, something that distinguishes this gap database from most other um, roadmaps or reports that list knowledge gaps or research gaps. And that um, we, we feel that there are a lot of different skill sets that can contribute to problems. And, um, and so each gap has, I don't know if you can see right here, this is needed skill sets. So these are skill sets that we've listed because we think that people with those skills and in those fields could contribute meaningfully to this gap in some way, shape or form. So, um, so you can choose, say, you know, if you are a um, studying geobiology, if you're studying geology, if you're studying mechanical engineering, you might say, where, where can I plug in? Um, you could click that and it will filter out um, different gaps that we think that mechanical engineers could contribute to. So that, that's what that means. Um, development stage, this, uh, this goes to, to, is this a conceptual problem at this point? Um, are people working on it in the lab? Do people have pilots? It's a pilot scale problem. Um, it's a commercial scale problem. A lot of these are still conceptual and lab scale uh, research gaps, which is probably as students right where you'll be looking. Um, time horizon, time horizon has to do with how long we think it will take for this gap to be solved. Um, you guys don't have very much time, which is totally fine. Um, but uh, if you're if you're curious to try to limit gaps, I, I don't think you need to because there are probably aspects of, of all gaps that you guys can think about over the next six months or so. And then, um, and then the approaches are basically a breakdown of, of what's in these pathways. So the pathways are the higher level and then the approaches are more detailed. And then um, needed org types. These are different organizations we think can contribute. So um, academia, that's where most of you will fit in. Accelerators, startups, some of you might be considering startups. Um, but yeah, so that's how that's how we've filtered it, or that's how we've we've organized it. Um, I did want to walk through a couple gaps that I think are particularly interesting or pressing. Um, and one of them is oh, another thing I guess I should show you is that you can just search the gap attributes for different things. Um, you can search for keywords. So um, if I want to look up like industry, for example. Um, I don't know if it's gonna come up. But yeah, you can see, for example, system integration waste management. Um, there are a lot of CDR techniques that make use of, of wastes. Um, there's another one in there, which is the one I was actually trying to find, but, um, <laughs> but, um, for example, there's a I think there's a lot of a lot of opportunity in understanding where does CDR plug into various waste streams, especially large industrial waste streams. Um, I need to move this to go back. Let's see. Uh oh. Um, nope. Sorry, I've got the zoom the zoom um, bit. The Zoom Chrome is blocking your. Yeah, your yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's it's, it's the quickly. next tab. Yeah, but I can't get to the next tab because it won't move. You can move the Zoom Chrome out of the way, like drag it to mm -hmm. another part of the screen. There we, there we go. It's not mm -hmm. always fun or easy to do, though. Just a minute. All right, here we go. Okay, so yeah, um, another um. Uh oh, I'm having all sorts of issues today. Um, 
Yeah, so I encourage everybody to play around with this. Um, I'll skip the, the final gap I was gonna show just because I think all the computer issues have taken okay. a lot of time, but also um, I think it's more fun to play with this yourself. Great. And and just one thing I want to add is like I said before, it's all editable, right? So like if you are in a specific gap, there is a button up top that says like edit this gap. So if you feel like, you know, we missed a question or you feel like, you know, in this specific gap, there's like if you scroll down, there's like all these like here's key papers, like who's working on this, blah, blah, blah. So there's like all, all types of resources. Of course, it's not, you know, like comprehensive and whatever. So if you feel like we missed something and, and you're working on something and questions come up, you can directly edit this and, and submit um, suggestions. And you can also, if you feel, you know, like you're working on a specific gap and it's not represented at all in like one form or another in this gap database, you can also on the um, front page of that carbon removal knowledge gaps database, there is like a text up top if you read that and it says, yeah, it, it tells you this, like, let us know there's a novel gap or whatever. If you click on that, it will open up a form where you can tell us about like topics that you feel are not represented. And I encourage you like all these links up top here, like tell you a little bit more how we build it. And I think it might be uh, worth exploring that to to um, make the most use of it. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> um, while we get this open, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt if you have more, but I, no. I kind of do like a test case. Can we like, if I come yeah. up with like a pro, like a, or maybe, ooh, maybe someone in the audience can like post like their background, like uh, I'm a mechanical engineer interested in biomass. Um, and then Kara could like, Try yeah. and find what uh, what comes up for that. So why don't we try that one first? But if somebody else wants to, someone of the audience wants to uh, post something in the chat about uh, describing themselves and see if they are uh, what knowledge gaps we can come up with them live. Uh, I would love to see it. All right, let's look for mechanical engineers. Um, there you go. Right, yeah, so and then if you go to bikers, maybe is is most yeah. like biomass based. Yeah. No. Oh, no. We don't we don't need you. <laughs> that was awesome. well, we're, okay. we're, do we need uh, mechanical engineers? Let's see. Right. Let's do all <laughs> pathways and see, okay. see what happens. Um, okay. So if you're a mechanical engineer, but, but, but that's the thing. Like there are so many things listed here. There's so many things that aren't listed here as well. Um, so uh, I would encourage people to, to find things that are not in here. Um, Someone just informed me uh, in the Q and A that the chat, I guess, is disabled. So I guess oh. if you want to type, it, yeah. So, but in the Q and A, you can post uh, a description of yourself, and uh, then we will uh, look you up and see what we can find for you live on stream. Sorry about that. I did not realize the uh, chat. Can was... you read one off? Uh, I'll yeah. do mine. I'll do. So I'm a physicist. I'll do. There's not a lot for physicists which is, was disappointing for me. I mean, there are probably a lot. <laughs> As someone who developed it, you maybe should have I know. you. I know. I really thought there would be a lot more for physicists. <laughs> and there are things, and I can think of other things that aren't in here, but um, but yeah. So uh, pa Parth Verma says that he's a mechanical engineer doing cryogenic DA DAC, direct air, yes. cryogenic direct air capture. So he's doing physics. <laughs> 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 and mechanical engineers. Um, yeah. Okay. So if we do mechanical engineering and DAC. Yeah. We can even put like cryogenic in the, oh yeah, we in, could. The, in the we search and just see what comes up. Okay. This comes up without putting cryogenic, but I agree that. Okay. Nope. Take these away. Um, there's no, well, I mean, you know, maybe that's such a, like a novel thing that'll really work for the, the novel portion of the rubric. It uh, is. Yeah. We cover that in one of our roadmaps, but I don't know that it made it in, in here. Um, um I think it's mentioned it, it might be described differently. So it might be, you know, like 
Yeah, it might be a different term. Low temperature or, yeah, not sure. No, what is low temp? Nothing. <laughs> what if I just look up temperature? Ah, there you go. Huh. Oh, Charlie. We okay. have another one that is uh, chemical engineering working in ocean CDR. Do we have a... Have anything for that? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I I can I can think of a few questions you can answer. <laughs> too, yeah. Yeah. Maybe just to answer that live. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are a lot that. Uh, here we go. Um. Yeah. So yeah, that looks like a a good variety of uh, of things there. Yeah. Yeah, but um, there's probably even more. We've got a researcher on MOF, uh, Metal Organic Frameworks. I'm so proud of it. So I, I should say at this point, I'm a, <laughs> I probably should have mentioned before, I'm a, my other job is I'm a professor at New York University, and I'm I'm very passionate about getting students involved in climate as as a uh, professor. Um, but I'm a professor of game design, which people always think is weird that I co-founded a uh, climate change organization focused on carbon removal. Uh, and I think part of what I am hoping people take away from this challenge is that. You know, there's obvious some like very clear and obvious connections like mechanical engineers, chemi uh, chemical uh, experts, like various different uh, things that you can focus on that I think are really obvious to people. But, you know, game designer, right? There's a lot of other uh, ways of thinking about the world and things that you can work on to try and make uh, carbon removal solutions and challenges. So. I recommend that, you know, even if you don't think this is necessarily for you or necessarily fits your background, think about this creatively because, uh, you know, as everyone always says, climate change is an all hands on deck situation. And I think too often people are sort of told to work on things. The things they can do are compost and recycle and march and vote, which you should do all those things. I'm not saying you shouldn't do those things. You should absolutely do those things. Those things are necessary, uh, but they're not sufficient. So uh, try and think creatively about other things you can do. Um, so uh, I'm going to start delving into some of these uh, Q&A things we have uh, going on here. Some of them might be about the challenge itself. Some of them might be about the, the uh, database. Uh, so we are doing DAC plus ocean storage. So how to show it at a prototype stage? Um, yeah, I guess that, that's actually a, a question I'm going to kick to the two of you. How would you recommend somebody show a prototype stage of uh, DAC and ocean storage? Think, what, um, yeah, go ahead, Coco. Uh, I'm not. I'm not sure. I understand the question. Like, uh, how how to show a prototype? Yeah, I think they're they're maybe thinking at a larger scale, and they're trying to think how do they do something small enough to actually and in, in the time frame for the for the challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. I mean, there's like like it. It depends a lot on the process, right? And and of course, like that time frame is short. So I think. I would try to break it down to things that are feasible within that time frame, and it might be that you demonstrate and like one specific piece of that technology. You know, like you might demonstrate your capture piece, or you might demonstrate your storage piece, or if you have a good understanding of that already, it might be you know like I demonstrate for the first time like a full integration. It can be you know like all scales are fair, fair game at a at a level that you know, informs or like brings forward the technology, I imagine, right? So, you know, sometimes technologies start at like, you know, we capture gram levels of CO2 in my like beaker in the lab. And that's oftentimes for students, like a very feasible experiment. Um, you know, if you don't have access to ocean water and you want to store and bicarbonate, I imagine that's like something you could, dem like could do in the lab in an like analogous setting, if that makes sense. I'm not sure I answered this question perfectly. So oh, I think that was I think that was a good response. Yeah, it's just breaking it down to its its component values and doing sort of smaller experiments. I think is is a good way of responding. To that Kara, did you want to add something to that? I was going to say basically the same thing, and um, maybe just uh, although Matt, you should uh, verify if this is true. It might be better to show one thing 
one small piece that works well than trying to do too much and then not really getting anywhere at all. Um, carbon removal is a big problem. Even startups have a lot of people spending all day um, and they still need months and months and months and months and sometimes years to prove things out. So um, I think it's great if everybody's ambitious and creative, but also um, it's okay to focus on just making one thing work. Yeah, and I think just one more piece to add here is like, really trying to think through like how you differentiate like what is the specific novel question that you try to answer in that field because like certain things we already know right like so thankfully we've we've been working as a collectively for quite some time so it might be fair to say you know like I have this novel sorbent and I want to show that this also can work with ocean water but you know and then you don't have to show the rest because you can probably point to like you know the, the back end of my technology is very similar to XYZ who's doing this already. So I think it's, it's like if you can like focus in on like what specifically is like that novel piece in that whole uh, CDR puzzle that you try to solve, I think that's um, that that can be like most unlocking for, for everything. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, I want to get to some of these other questions. I know we're running a little bit low on time. Uh, I just want to quickly call out uh, Stacy, uh, who is a project manager uh, at the University of Calgary. So they're already uh, playing with the database already. So I don't know if you knew that, but uh, yeah, I think it's good to know that people are out there using it and interacting with it already. Um, the uh, There's a question here, an anonymous question. Um, any knowledge gap in playing with the database, which... If I'm interpreting that correctly, I think what they're asking is if you like design an improvement to the knowledge gaps database, is that something that would be helpful to you and thus something that would be a potential submission to the carbon removal challenge? I am so excited and I really hope that you <laughs> interpret this well. So um that that's exactly what that person is asking please shoot me an email also university of calgary amazing very very happy to hear that this is useful and you're using this uh we love feedback we know this isn't perfect so any any feedback super super welcome how could this be like more useful for anyone let us know if the person that said like is there a knowledge gap in using and improving the database definitely you know we've we've seen before this this is a starting point it's not comprehensive it's hard to keep it updated too because the the field is moving forward we rely on people like submitting edits and whatnot we try like Kara and I and like other people involved in the database try to keep it updated and do these like you know let's run through and see what what new knowledge what new papers are out there how can we improve this in our like day-to-day -day jobs, we have a lot of other things to do. So it's like really hard for us to dedicate a lot of time to this. So we would love to recruit um, a champion who would love to like be involved more and help us like keep this tool updated, improve it and make it better and more useful for the field. So if anyone's out there who thinks this looks like a fantastic starting point and you have like great ideas on, on how you can keep this updated, please shoot me an email and let's see um, if we can get you involved. I would love this very, very much. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think that makes a lot of sense. I just want to, I know we're running really low on time now, so but if people do have questions, we might be able to get to them if you get them in quickly right now. I want to make sure we get to as many of these questions as they come in. If people have questions about, uh, more questions about the database, about things to submit to the challenge, about the format of the challenge or things like that. Uh, we would love to get any of those questions. But uh, we did have a uh, comment, I guess, that came in uh, saying that uh, ocean-based projects, that uh, feasibility is also the key from uh, from Christopher Mag Magali Maglia. I'm not sure I'm saying that right, but apologies if I said your name wrong. I was trying to get them right, but I don't always do that. Um, yeah, and I think that's true. Like if there's a way to sort of uh, have a submission for the challenge that sort of talks about feasibility or a way to measure feasibility of a project or, or something like that, that's another uh, way to go with a possible submission to the challenge. Uh, we had a question from Jordan, uh, who is a soil biologist looking to make uh, recalcitrant mineralization version of biochar using X. I'm going to not be able to, maybe one of you can read this. Maybe one of you is more yeah. capable. 
Um, okay. Using in situ magnesium mineralization. Uh, there oh, is very cool. There for MRV of hydrated magnesium carbonates applied to agricultural soils. Um, unfortunately, there's not much out there for MRV for for anything. <laughs> um, there's still uh, mm -hmm. there's, it's it there's a lot of um, a lot of work being done at the moment, but there's not there's not a lot of um, yeah, and MRV we should we should define because uh, you know not everyone on every call knows, and and I, in general I think we should try to use acronyms a little less because so D DAC which we've mentioned a few times direct air capture I like to say DACC which still says DAC but you get direct air carbon capture and if people if you just say direct air capture to people people don't know what it means so if they don't already know what it means so just pushing my personal agenda of calling it direct air carbon capture we'll see if that ever takes hold um, but uh mrv uh so measurement uh i'm blanking on r what, what's wrong with my brain right now someone jump in and save me measurements uh reporting and verification thank you reporting and verification i was su super blanking on v for some reason thank you reporting and verification thank you uh part in the comments as well man total uh weird time to have my brain lock up uh mm -hmm. so yeah so I think that's also an area if someone has a, like a great idea for how to improve MRV uh, measurement reporting verification, uh, that would be, you know, an amazing thing to submit to the challenge as well. It doesn't have to all be about something that actually does the removing of carbon. If you have an idea for something that can help people do better job of figuring out how much carbon was removed um, or help people measure that better or, uh, you know, any part of the process, that is something that would be an awesome submission to the challenge. Yeah, I would agree with that. I don't know if you guys can see in the chat, I put um, a link to a very long paper um, on measurement for geochemical carbon removal. Um, it's aimed towards people actually doing the measurements. But one thing that would be really interesting is if you work in a lab with sensors that might not normally be applied to carbon removal, but they could be, or you could adapt them somehow. Um, especially if you're a physicist, because I know there are a lot of um, uh, really good, um, I mean, I, physicists are really good at measuring tiny signals. So um, as the physicist, as the physicist, um, <laughs> yeah, but, but in other fields too, um, there are probably things that you, that get used every day in labs that people don't think to apply to carbon removal. So. Yeah, for sure. I think that, you know, there's a ton of opportunities out there for, you know, just testing new sorbents. Like there's a lot of things out there that could be applied to carbon removal that uh, people just haven't thought to to try that there yet. So I think that's an excellent opportunity uh, for uh, for people to uh, to find new ways. Um, OK, so I think uh, I'm going to post. Uh, sorry, uh, the link that. Uh, Kara just posted. I'm going to post to everyone because apparently, oh yeah, I can't. Currently, see only allowing me to post to everyone. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, we'll do better next time. Uh, in the meantime, I think that is uh, all the time we have for today. So please stay tuned. We'll be sending out more information about upcoming uh, info sessions to learn more about. Uh, and more education about uh, ways to work within the challenge and learn more about carbon removal overall. Uh, but thank you so much. Special thank you to our guests today, Kraka and Kara. Great job. Uh, and thank you to the rest of the uh, Carbon Removal Challenge team. Uh, today we were joined by Duncan and Thushar, but uh, please keep checking out the website. And you, really, if you are a team, sign up now. If you're interested, get yourself an advisor, get yourself a team, sign up now. We'd love to have you involved. We are going to have, uh, you know, we have a large capacity for teams, but there might become a certain point where we have to start doing first come, first serve. So get in early so you are served first uh, and we don't have to cut you off. We'll let people know if we're getting close to that line, but uh, the earlier you get in, the more assured you are to be part of the challenge. So uh, thanks, everybody. Any last uh, comments, thoughts, additions from anybody? Nope. Good Very luck. excited. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we're all really excited. Uh, well said. And get to work. Yeah. Get to, <laughs> start now. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thanks so much. Good to see you. Bye.